Hi guys, in this video we will talk about EV chargers and specifically smart EV chargers that works together with solar systems um, because this is a great development that's happening uh, right now is that chargers for EVs are being integrated into solar systems so that uh, we can charge our EVs um, in different modes and one mode is especially interesting and that is to charge it only from solar. Um, so we're just using the Alpha Charger as an example. Uh, this is uh, made for the smile systems. Um, so for example, can be integrated in the T10 solar, solar system. Um, this one will be available in, the, in autumn. So uh, I will definitely have this available for installation later, later this year. Uh, but first, let's uh, talk a little bit uh, generally about chargers and EV charging. So we have three types. Uh, the portable, the um, sort of only looks like a cable that you attach to a socket at the house. Uh, this is the weakest kind of charging, only can charge a few thousand watts. And uh, if you have a big uh, battery in the EV, it's going to take very, very long time to fill it up. But for small uh, EV cars, it's certainly doable and very nice. Let's say if you go, go on a trip and you need to be able to charge from a socket, uh, this is obviously a very good and portable way of uh, charging an EV car. And then you have more dedicated chargers that are installed uh, in the house and you cannot really move them around easily. Uh, but they are much more powerful. And then you, ha you have the standard chargers, which are stronger than portable. And here in this category, we also have the smart chargers. So this is what we're going to talk about later. But let's just go through these classifications first. Then we have the DC fast chargers. Mostly these are installed on the road by special companies. Um, Normally, in a house setting, you would not have a DC fast charger. Um, many reasons for that, but there's also... Um, it just requires it's high technology that's not very convenient to have at home. However, there are places where they can be installed in connection to solar systems. Uh, for example, in Australia, there's um, a few cases where DC fast chargers have been installed in homes. And probably that will become more and more common, but it's not really any point to have this connected to a residential solar system because those solar systems are too small. Uh, so you would not be charging from solar, you would be, be charging... 90% from the grid um, so it's not the usefulness of this comes more when you are traveling and you want to stop and charge the car as fast as possible also with today's technology DC fast charging is also harder on the batteries however that's not a major concern but because obviously the benefit of charging fast is by far outweighs, uh, um, you know, things like uh, battery lifetime and things like that. But it should be a concern um, for your planning for over the long term. Absolutely, that uh, it's better for the battery to charge from a slower charger. Um, so let's talk now more about the smart chargers and what kind of technology is going to be and already is available here. Uh, the first mode is the most interesting and that is that the smart charger can be set in a mode that is charging from solar only. So let's take a look at specifically how that works. This is from the manual in the alpha charger. Um, so you see here they call it the green charge and that's a very good reason for that and that is because it's only charging from the solar panels. It will not supplement from the grid or the batteries, uh, so it will be slow. But um, 
it will be free because obviously it's only charging from the battery. So after you have the system, it will actually be free because you're only using power from directly from the panels. So here's the priority. Um, if PV is available, it will first supply other loads, meaning things in the house. Then it will charge the battery. After that, it will charge the e the EV. So you could have a situation, and this is where the planning comes. Uh, you have a have a day where you are don't have too much activities in the house, and uh, you have nice sunshine. In the early morning, the system will fill up the batteries, and then uh, in daytime and afternoon, it will fill up the EV. So if you plan it plan it like that, you can actually charge it. If you have a 10 kilowatt system, you could charge it 30, 40, even 50 kilowatt hours from from the system uh, from directly from the panels. And after that, it will feed into the grid. So this is what I am gonna try to do when I uh, get my EV. I don't have it yet, but. This is obviously the best way to charge EVs. It does require some planning and obviously if you need the car to charge fast, let's say you have some, you're going on a long trip, then you cannot uh, use this mode. If you need the car to be ready within a few hours, then you have to look on the other modes. And obviously it's a great benefit that these other modes are available because sometimes we need the car to be fully charged fast. But, you know, on the smaller cars, most of the time your car is going to be parked in a not empty state. So when you start charging, you're not going to be charging from very low battery. Normally you're going to be charging from half maybe or even more than half. And then this mode will work great. But let's say your the battery is close to empty and you need to go somewhere the next day, then you can do either green, that will also take in the batteries, and you can also go for the max power charge, where you will also use the grid, so then it will charge the fastest possible. So, so those those are the three modes, and this is where the smart charging shines, obviously. Um, great technology, if you ask me. Um, now, the limitation on this charger is uh, 11,000 watts. Uh, so it will charge 11 kilowatt hours in one hour if it's at maximum. If you leave it in mode one, in the green mode, that will, you know, not... It will not reach the maximum because... Uh, on a well, it depends what system you're connected to, but most systems uh, will be 10 kilowatt hours that these are connected to. Uh, if you are on smaller systems, um, that's fine too. It can also be used for single phase. Um, but let's take the three phase uh, T10 as an example, uh, the Alpha T10 10 kilowatt solar system. Uh, then most of the time it will be lower than 10 kilowatt that uh, is available. So that is obviously why Alpha has sized it uh, this way. Uh, it looks small, but this is obviously a design that's meant to cover the green mode, the mode number one needs. Um, and it's sized after the T10. That's how I, even though I do not know for sure, it, that's what it looks like to me that it's uh, designed to be used in connection with the 10 kilowatt uh, solar system, for example, the, the T10. Um, and then uh, when the maximum power is available in the middle of the day, it has, it has the ability to charge around 10 kilowatt. Uh, and then when it's less, it's going to be less. So that, that's no problem. Um, so that's the rating of this charger. Now, obviously, there are going to be so many different products available and how this is going to work with different solar systems. Uh, we, we are not sure yet. We have to see how the technology develops and uh, what what is the com compatibility with different models and, and solar systems. Um, and you're also we're, we will also have different modes available 
that are more advanced over time. For example, to use the battery um, in the car to supply the load on the house, uh, even though that's, you know, I think the technology is there, it's not, but it's not implemented yet, but that will certainly come, come in the future. And the reason for that is obviously because EV batteries are enormous compared to stationary batteries. Uh, so it would be very, very beneficial to be able to use those batteries for the house. So, and then, so, so this is what's called the vehicle to grid, that technology. Um, now, that can actually be a service to the grid. Uh, so when the demand is high, we help the grid or we help the supplier by sending electricity out and we would get compensated for that. Now, for something like that to happen in Thailand, I think that's a very long time into the future. I don't really see this happening uh, anytime soon just because the electrical authority doesn't seem very interested in this kind of technology. But, but who knows? I mean, you never know. It could change. But I would not expect it to change very fast. So, and then we have the vehicle to home, that's what we talked about. Um, needs a bi-directional charge point. And this is especially beneficial if you have, uh, if you have uh, the time of use uh, meter. Now, let me explain a little bit about the time of use uh, first. If you have a time of use meter, you would have different rates uh, when the demand is when the demand is high, you would have a high rate, and when the demand is low, you would have a low rate. So if you then would be able to um, load up the batteries, charge the batteries when you have a low rate, and use the electri electricity stored in the batteries when the rate is high, then you have a very good situation where you can actually save a lot of money. That's called load shifting. So... If you have a normal meter in Thailand, you do not have the possibility for that. But some people have, including some of our customers, they have what's called a TOU meter. Okay, so if you have that, you could theoretically do this in the future. So, and also you can use your solar and use your um, appliances and you can save money with load shifting. Um, so this is more for the future, what's going to be pos possible in the future. Uh, it's not available for most people yet, but it's something that you can think about. And it is also possible, if you do not have a TOU meter, you can request it. So it is possible to get in many cases. So it's something to be aware of if you are going into... Uh, an investment with a big battery system and you have the ability for uh, for vehicle to home then it's certainly very very useful to get the TOU meter now some of our customers have TOU meters but they might not be aware of it so if you think that you might have it actually the bill from PA I'm not sure about the MEA but at least from the PA the bill looks completely different because obviously you would have the um, different rates specified on the bill, the different timings. So you would have high peak and holiday, you know, different different um, rates. So that's specified on the bill. So if you have that, that means you have a TOU meter. That's logical. So you can check that. If you're unsure, just send me a message and I will... Uh, I think we can find out for you, no problem at all. Um, uh, vehicle to load, that this is more for the portable. Uh, uh, let's say you go on a camping trip and you want to charge an appliance directly from the car. Uh, that's what you would call vehicle to load. It's not so relevant, but it's a nice concept to know about. Um, vehicle to home is different in that it just supplies the home all the appliances in the home so that's the difference between these things vehicle to load would be specific appliance 
well vehicle to uh, to home would be uh, all the appliances in the house vehicle to grid is obviously what we we talked about is when you support the grid you basically exporting from the battery uh, in the car to the grid not very likely to be used in thailand as i said okay so that was a little bit uh, small introduction and then we can get uh, more information about this at, as we get more experience with these kinds of smart charging uh, but i think it's very exciting and very very cool technology and basically the the scenario that's most interesting uh, to people and to me as, as an example is to have a, let's say i have an ev car with a 100 kilowatt hour battery with a 10 kilowatt hour solar system i would be able to charge that and the load in my house over just a few days from from a low battery to a full battery and i will be able to drive very long distances completely free so that it's that situation that's uh, very attractive and very very environmentally friendly of course so it's both financially very nice situation and and environmentally friendly so it's a good it's a perfect combo for uh, for the future Okay, guys, we'll have more about smart charging later.